turn to page 178 for stage four of informative explanatory writing. This is going to be the full-on paragraph with an official topic sentence, details, and conclusion. On page 178, we're going to introduce the chant, and then the pages that include stage four go all the way up to page 182. Let's first introduce the chant. So I tell the children, we've learned our topic sentence when we were at stage three. Now we're going to learn how to write a paragraph. So let's learn what a paragraph is. Ready, everyone? Topic sentence, SS light bulb. That's the big idea of a paragraph, what all the information is about. Now I need details. That's information, 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 all about that topic sentence. Then I need a conclusion. I need to repeat that topic sentence, but use different words using S light bulb. So now let's go back and let's say the whole thing. Topic sentence, S, S light bulb. That's the big idea of this paragraph. That's what all the information is about. Details is information, 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 all about that topic sentence. Conclusion, repeat that topic sentence, but use different words. Let's go back and say it in a very fast way without the secret formulas. Eventually, this is what you would do for the chant. Topic sentence, that's the big idea of a paragraph. Details are information, 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 all about that topic sentence. Go back and say this. Once you've introduced this chant down the road, you're going to want to just simplify it so that it's a very fast chant. Here we go. Ready? Topic sentence. That's the big idea of the paragraph. What all the information is about. Ready? Now I need details, details, details. That's information about the topic sentence. Conclusion. Repeat that topic sentence, but use different words. I have a very simple way to do it. After you've introduced this chant, identified what these secret formulas are, then eventually you just make it simple like I just said. Eventually, what we'll be doing for our chant is instead of just saying SS light bulb, we'll leave that out and we'll say topic sentence. That's the big idea of the paragraph, what all the information is about. Then we'll say details and you'll repeat this three times. Details, 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 that's information, information, information about the topic sentence. Conclusion, repeat the topic sentence, use different words, and then get rid of the S light bulb. I want to caution you, when I do conclusion, I'm going conclusion, and I'm pointing back up to the topic sentence. I'm going, repeat that topic sentence, and then I'm yelling at the conclusion, and I'm going, but use different words. So that way they can remember that they're just ending their topic, they're giving that closure to their paragraph, by repeating what the big idea is, but you don't want them to copy that topic sentence. You want them to use different words. We'll go back and we'll say the whole thing. Ready? Topic sentence. That's the big idea of the paragraph. Now I need details, details, details. That's information, information about that topic sentence. Conclusion. Repeat that topic sentence, but use different words. So that's the simple way. Let's review the pages for stage four. On page 179, you have your at a glance steps for teaching your students. This is your teacher cheat sheet page to teach your students how to write a paragraph. Here we have our topic sentence, steps one through five. You already taught them this and you want them to know that. Boys and girls, we already know how to write a topic sentence. That's what stage three was all about. Now the details, 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 that's the body of the paragraph. That's how many details do you need? We don't know. You never tell the kids, oh, you need three details at least. You tell them, we need to write as many details needed to tell about that big idea. It should always be about the information, not an arbitrary number. In the details part of your paragraph, in the body of the paragraph, what you're going to find here is that you're going to draw a detail box each time. And this is a repeat of stage two when you're writing a simple paragraph. And that is, these details are either going to be organized by categories or organized in a sequence. And that's critical that they've learned that in stage two because you're adding more as you go up stages, you keep adding more. We're going to add on what we have learned in stage two, where we are either going to organize the details in categories, they don't have to be in a specific order, or we have to sequence them. They have to be in a specific order, so they're sequencing. And we have our metacognitive questions. For a question when it comes to categorizing, we have our categorize card, and remember these cards are 
in Blackline Masters in this section, but our categorized cards, the question would be, tell about, and then for the detail, one, and then you have to use one of these words right here. Tell about one way weathering breaks down rocks. So that would be categorizing. If I had sequencing, then they would be asking the sequencing question. Tell what happened first in the life cycle of a butterfly. Tell what happened next, next, next in the life cycle of a butterfly. You always have to decide how are we organizing our information, our details. Now that we know how we're going to organize it, we know what question to ask the big idea in order to stay on topic and get each detail. The next thing you're going to see in this section, though, is step three, and that's expand the detail. You have expand cards and what this is is this is where we're going to add a tell more why or how phrase to a sentence if needed and we're going to have different types of conjunctions or connecting words to help us connect that phrase expanding sentences you're going to have more complex more sophisticated sentences using this technique step three you don't have to do it for each detail, but it's that option is there so your children are adding more to their writing. And then finally, the last part here is the conclusion. And the conclusion, in order to help children repeat the big idea using different words, if my SS light bulb up here was butterflies, and then what about them, uh, use different, have different body parts so they can survive, now, when I go down here to my conclusion, I'm going to have to say subject. Well, I already set up here butterflies. What's another way I could say butterflies? Could I use a proper noun, pronoun, or a synonym? Oh, I'll use a synonym, insects. So now I could have these colorful insects. And then, instead of saying body parts, I could say use their head, thorax, and abdomens in order to survive. Instead of saying body parts, you could actually name those three parts and would put them there. Or even just draw a picture so that you have the three parts that you're pointing to. These are your at-a-glance step for the topic sentence, for the details and conclusion, aligning you to your common core standards. So you have all those elements in your informative explanatory writing embedded in your lesson. Now let's turn to the next page. On page 180, you have your descriptor box that tells you in the content and organization, sentences and mechanics, what will you expect your children to have? What skills are you teaching at this stage? And eventually you want children to master at this stage under content and organization, sentences and mechanics. Below, you're going to see brainstorm. And what this basically is, is if students know the information, what do you always do in a lesson? You brainstorm first. So in this particular example, what happened was the children were studying an earth science unit and they were studying about weathering and erosion and they were brainstorming information and the teacher was recording the information up on the board. And as the teacher recorded the information, it was grouped in categories what information went together. Now you'll find when kids brainstorm, they tend to go with details first. So put the information up on the board. The children are not writing on their own paper. You would just let them together work uh, where they talk with each other, talk in pairs, talk at tables. Then you would have different tables or different children where you would ask them to tell you everything they've learned in their earth science unit. As they tell you information, you put it up on the board. This example showed how students were giving information and it was grouped. You saw how wind can break rocks into little pieces, water, rain, plants, the frost from cold weather, freezing and causing the rocks to break into little pieces. So we're putting the information up on the board. Over here was coastal erosion. These were the steps that happened, a specific order that we went through. And as children told me all the different parts of coastal erosion, I was putting it up on the board. Finally, halfway through, when I had many different details grouped together, as they gave me details, I would ask them, well, which one of these places should I put that information? If you just said plants break the rocks into tiny pieces with their roots as they grow, would that go over here? Now, these aren't labeled yet. I'm just with the details asking, would the plants go over here where I have the waves crashing on the rocks and breaking it into different pieces? 
would I have that there or do I need it in this category where I see wind and rain and then plants breaking rocks into, into little pieces? Oh, this category. So then I write it down. They start telling me where to put the details. I may stop after a while and say, well, what are all these things? Ro um, wind breaking rocks into pieces, different types of water and rain, uh, plants, roots, uh, the frost, the frozen weather. What is that? Oh, that's weathering. So then we box it. Now you have your big idea. So when you're brainstorming, this is probably one of the most important times in your writing process where you're organizing all your information and start with what the kids give you. Now you will have some children who will give you a big idea. Great. Then you want to say, wow, is that just information about something or is that a big idea? Is that telling me what the information is about? Let's box it then. So when you're getting information from the kids, you want to identify which category does it go into and should we box it? Should we give it a big idea after a while? So now we have our details here. Look what we have. We have a weathering paragraph and a coastal erosion paragraph. I now have two different writing projects that my kids can do when it comes to informative explanatory writing about information they've learned. These same steps could be used if you were the giver of information in lecture notes or interactive writing. But we are right now doing this as a after a unit of study and this particular example for stage four, it's an after a unit of study where the children know a lot of information, they brainstorm and now we take the brainstorm by identifying one of the paragraphs of information that they brainstormed to walk through the steps to actually write it out on a planner. Next to you, you see our details. These were the cards I showed you. If the details are for categorizing, this is our prompt. If the details are for sequencing, this is our prompt. And then if we're expanding details, here's our card to help students take their sentence, their detail sentence, and add on to it. Tell more why or how about that detail. So we have our cards here for our details. We have our, on the right page over here, we have our steps the wall chart. Right behind me, I have an example of this stage four chart. Notice the topic sentence has the pink or reddish type of color, the details green, and then the conclusion is also going to be red because it's repeating that topic sentence. You have it color coded so kids can see the different parts easily. You have your chart so that your students can visually see as you walk through the steps and they follow it. The goal of this lesson is for them to master these steps because these steps are the metacognitive steps that your brain goes through in order to write information. That's what you're doing here. It really doesn't matter about the erosion paragraph or the weathering paragraph. What really matters is that they understand these steps because if they can do these steps, they can write any paragraph. That's our whole point when we're teaching these lessons. So we have over here, your steps, a sample student planner. This sample planner was from the brainstorm about coastal erosion. On page 182, that ends, it's our final page of stage four, and this is a student example of writing where they've written out from their organizer the coastal erosion paragraph. We're going to go back and follow the steps of this stage four in order to write a paragraph together. We'll go to the brainstorm. We'll look at the weathering information that was brainstormed by the students. We will follow those steps in order to write a paragraph about weathering. Let's get started. 